All right, that was uh, part A, 1A. Well done if you got your way through that. Let's have a look at part B together, which is a uh, pretty classic 3D vectors question. It says, where does the line R, and then they uh, provide you all of this, this particular part, um, intersect the sphere, uh, and then they give you this equation of a sphere down here. Okay, so what do we do with this thing? Um, we're trying to find points of intersection, and just like in two dimensions, the way that you find points of intersection is to solve simultaneously. It's not that complicated, right? So let's have a go at doing that together. To solve, this is our part B. Part B. To solve simultaneously, uh, I'm going to get the two equations together. So I had the line being equal to, um, I think it was i plus 2j minus 3k. So there's our three directions there. Um, here comes uh, t, so often we have a lambda there, but it doesn't matter. The parameter can be called anything. And then you've got uh, 2i plus j plus 2k. There's our straight line. Um, our sphere is going to be r take away, and then this should look suspiciously familiar to you. Uh, 2j minus 3k. You can see, in fact, that matches the vector that you got up here that positions the line. Uh, and what's that going to be equal to? 6. So there's our radius of our sphere. So solving simultaneously, as promised, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the line into the sphere equation. That looks like the most straightforward way to do it. So, solving simultaneously, I'm going to substitute all of this R, uh, yeah, I'll just stay with orange, that's fine, all of this R oop, into this R right here, okay? So, therefore, I get I plus 2J minus 3K plus, here comes the parameter T, 2I plus J plus 2K. Uh, and then there's the, there's the substitution into R, and what I subtract is this same vector that I had here. So I'm going to subtract that and close off my absolute value. That equals to 6. Um, so you can see here, this is going to cancel with all of this. So that gives me uh, the absolute value sign starts again. Uh, you get that T in there, and then you've got, in fact, I don't know even why I wrote that separately. All of this comes along for the ride close that and that equals to six. All right, now this is the part I then need to go and solve. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking for the values of the parameter, like particular values of the parameter will get you onto particular points on the line. So there are going to be, I expect, um, a couple of different places that the line will intersect with the sphere. I'm just assuming that it's a secant. Um, I may well find that there are no points of intersection, so there will be no solution for t. Um, or it is possible that this line is tangent to the sphere, which would mean that there is a single value of t that actually works. So let's try and solve this and see what emerges. I can get rid of all of this absolute value notation or the absolute value notation that is you know, relevant to get rid of by saying, let's pull out the parameter there, t, and then apply that absolute value to this, which is what's the distance to the point at the end of this position vector. So this is just Pythagoras, yeah? It's going to be the square root of uh, 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. I'm just reading off my i and j and k coefficients, right? That's how far I'm moving in the x, the y, and the z directions. That is equal to 6. Uh, and then I just need to do a bit of solving here. So um, this is going to be uh, absolute value of t over here. This is 4 plus 1 plus 4, so that's 9. So the square root of 9, last I checked, is 3. That's equal to 6. So now I'm getting the absolute value of t equals divided through by 3. That gives me 2. So t can be plus or minus 2. So what I need to do is take these, these two parameters and pop them back into the line equation because that's where t belongs, right? And that should give me two coordinates, uh, two points on the line that intersect with the sphere. So substituting back into the line equation. And I think it's really important whenever your working takes a sort of left or a right turn, um, you use words to make clear why the equations or why, why one equation sort of gives way to another one. Um, so substituting back into line equation, because that's the only one that has t's in it, 
Let's do t equals two. Um, so t equals two is going to give me a particular point. I'm going to call it point one. Um, and when I substitute it in, here is the line equation right here. So the t equals two is going to go right there. Yeah. Now just to make this a bit easier for myself, I'm just going to write this in column form because then I just don't have to write all the i's and j's and k's. Um, and mathematicians, famously lazy, right? So here comes the column. It's one, two, negative three. There's my position vector. And then I'm going to add two lots of, you know, there's the um, parameter that I've substituted in, uh, two, one, two. There we go, that was the direction vector. So when I have a look at that, let's see here, I'm going to compare my um, components here, so that's one plus four on the top, two plus two in the middle, and negative three plus four on the bottom. So that's giving me five, four, and then one by the looks of things. Done that for the first parameter, let's do it for the second. So here comes negative two, that's gonna give me a secondary point. Uh, and in fact, it's gonna look much like this first piece of working here, if I can copy and paste it properly, this first piece of working here with just this one subtle difference, which is that minus sign, right? Because I'm substituting in t equals negative two, um, which means I can be even lazier. Don't mathematicians love um, sort of saving the work. Um, everything here is going to start out the same, but um, I'm going to be subtracting uh, this secondary vector here. So it'll be one minus four, two minus two, and then minus three, minus four. So I can just do the arithmetic on this. Uh, let's see, that's going to be a negative three, you get a zero and a negative seven. So that's P2, and that was P1 up there. So, uh, I'm pretty much done. I should tie this up neatly in a bow because I was asked for points of intersection, not vectors that point at points of intersection. So therefore, I'm gonna say the points of intersection are, and let's just write them in coordinate form. Are, what do we get? Five, four, one the first time, wasn't it? Five, comma, four, comma, one, and negative three, comma, zero, comma, negative seven. Happy times. Okay, so we have just found the points of intersection between that line and the sphere. The next question is going to be about integration.